All right, we're live. Okay. All right. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Energy First Golf. Uh, today is actually the the very first time, very first time, Energy First Golf, the English channel that we're doing a live stream. All right. And also, I want to introduce you. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows who I am. I'm Lawrence, and you can see my partner Jason. Uh, he's actually, I'm somewhere up here in Nashville, and Jason is in Atlanta, and uh, we're using technology to make this thing work. And um, he's also gonna get the questions and ask me, I'm gonna answer your questions. So um, I know, um, doesn't matter, um, you, uh, I have a lot of viewers been watching my channel since the beginning and then I have a lot of viewers um, just started watching it. Uh, let me just give you guys a little bit of intro about what this channel is all about. Um, energy First Golf, the idea of Energy First Golf is that Energy First Impact Later. We want to introduce to amateurs. What I mean by amateurs means someone who started playing golf later as an adult or someone who started playing golf early but didn't really get the correct education of what golf is or learn how to swing properly. So there's a lot of amateurs out there, you know, play golf but needs correct instructions. And you all know that I started playing golf when I was 19, which is adult. So of course, if you follow the channel, you have to see a lot of instructions I talked about it doesn't work for adults. You know, energy first golf, energy first impact later. Our golf instruction is purely catered to you guys, the amateurs. All right, so this is what this channel is all about. Um, this channel is continuous, even though this is the very first time we're doing a live stream. I'm extremely excited, but we're going to do that on a regular basis. So if you guys have any questions, uh, we're always going to announce when we're doing the live stream. So keep those questions, ask me regarding golf. All right. So uh, obviously today is the um, April 4th. Um, so I know in China they have some kind of memorial for this particular event because we all know that there is a um, serious situation globally in the world that's hurting a lot of people, right? Um, so I just wanna make sure you guys stay out there, you know, keep your social distance and stay indoor whenever you can, wash your hands, um, just be very careful, you know, drink plenty of water, liquid, keep you hydrated, all right? Um, now, obviously, hopefully, I know we as a race, as a human race, we're going to go, we are going to overcome this. It's happened before, it's happening now, and it will happen again, but let's focus on how do we deal with what's going on right now. So everybody stay out of harm's way, be safe, okay, wash your hands. So that being said, so now, uh, as you can see, we have a title, we talked about how the coronavirus, the COVID-19 virus, they're the same thing. What is affecting the golf industry, right? And the truth is, I think the way I look at things in life is that, yes, things will happen, okay? There's good and evil. But I think certain things happen for certain reasons. You know, if we, you know, the cliche would be, if it doesn't hurt you, it makes you stronger. Okay, so I do believe that um, the current event that's happening in the world, it is actually good for golf. Okay, so again, if it's ne if it never happened, it's still golf is such a great game. But I think in the way how we look at it, reflect back many years from now. That people say, well, you know what, that during that 2020, you know, beginning of 2020, and then coronavirus happened, and it got a lot of people started playing golf. Um, let me explain to you. So, 
obviously we're in the United States. Um, this is a serious matter, you know, and there are a lot of states that's locked down. But there are states and there are places that golf course is actually is exempt from the lockdown. Say, for example, the course I teach, which is a St. Malo Country Club. They're still open. They let people go out there and play golf. And people ride single cards or you can walk, which is highly recommended. You can walk and keep the distance. Right? Now, a um, couple of weeks ago, when the um, virus happening, I've noticed that you know, a lot of people are off work, either working at home or they have a lot of free time. So I have noticed that when I was on the golf course, one, I have noticed that there are a lot more girlfriends, there are a lot more wives that's riding with the husband, the boyfriend, or friend that's in the cart, which you're not going to see that. Really, I, I've never seen it. It's, it's a phenomenon. I said, wow, that's great. We've got non-golfers that's coming out to just hang around, enjoy the game, you know, watch the husband or the boyfriend play. And maybe they'll get into it, okay? And that's one thing, because the virus is changing, see? It makes non-golfers go out there, enjoy the sun, enjoy the beautiful scenery. And maybe, you know, get a putter and putt here and there. So that's one, I think, it's going to get a lot of people start to get more, look at golf a little bit differently. And a lot of guys maybe start to enjoy playing golf with your girlfriend, your wife, right? And it could be a thing to do in the future. Because, you know, I also believe this virus is also changing. It will change the way how the world runs a little bit. We just, you know, no one can predict exactly what the future is, but it's definitely changing. So that's one phenomenon or uh, something happened, or something new that I see a lot more non-golfers, especially being, you know, quote unquote females, ladies that get involved with playing and watching. And two, as funny as sounds, if you all watch my channel, I always believe that the professional golf and the amateur golfs doesn't mix and there's no need especially for the game of golf so right now because of coronavirus all of this golf tournaments professional leagues are shutting down so in other words you can almost say that the professionals are not playing golf I'm sure they'll practice, they'll play, but they're not playing golf like what they play golf. So you can say that the professionals are not playing golf. But, isn't that funny? Not that it's getting a lot more amateurs. And the truth is, I'm on Facebook, you know, we have a Facebook group, and um, please, um, Jason, share the link, and a lot of yeah, you I'll can... Yeah, share the link, yes, with everyone. Yes, so you can join our private Energy First Golf Facebook group, and all of a sudden, there are so many private groups popping up on Facebook. It, it never did happen before, but now there's like Simple Golf, Art of Golf, you know, just different groups. Now, why is that? It's because one, you all know now, people can still um, play golf. And golf is not stopping, but the amateur means not the pros are still playing golf every day. And so they say, well, why don't we start this group? Why don't we start this group? Why don't we start this camaraderie? You know, this great energy that we can have fun. We're going to continue to have fun. It doesn't matter, you know, when this thing is going to end, but this can last forever, right? So there are a lot more Facebook groups that's popping up. And there are a lot more exchange of ideas between amateurs that people from different corners of the continent. I mean, there are people from England, there are people from Sweden. I mean, this, they're all in the same group because of Facebook, because of technology. And so people are asking questions and helping each other out. And I'm obviously being the golf instruction enthusiast. I always chime in and give them advice and send them our energy first golf 
channel link and they can check it out because I truly believe again like I say the energy first impact later idea is going to help all of the amateurs to continuously improve and understand the correct knowledge of golf so that it's also happening so the pros are not playing but the amateurs are playing I think that's great because really, if you really think about it, golf is actually people's game. You know, if you guys see my channel, I talk about how golf is actually like a martial arts. You know, when you talk about martial arts, the actual UFC and people who practice martial arts doesn't have to have any type of relationship. Because martial arts, if you practice martial arts, it's really good for your body. And the truth is, we talked about how you can practice energy first golf it's actually really good for your health overall your health so you can see you don't need the professional league the pga tour the european tour to push this great game of golf this sport you don't need the pro league to push that because everybody without the pro league you are playing golf that is just amazing right so that's the reason why I do believe this, again, of course, when everything is ended, people are going to what? Watch tour players. But take this moment, think about what I just said. You don't need to learn from pros. You don't need to shoot past par. If I say every one of you, you can shoot low 80s consistently. High 70s consistently. Would you take it? Absolutely. So there's no, as we know, golf should never mix from amateurs to pro. And now, because this virus is actually showing the reality of golf, where pros are not needed, right? And also, with all the equipment, because now no one's going to the store buying. The equipments or checking out new equipments and you're going to stay with your old golf club you know when I say oh, a lot of you may have a golf club that's maybe like a, a whole set of golf club maybe only a year or two year old and you stick with it and they're great clubs you don't need to go out there and get the, the baddest the newest fancy driver because what you have in your hand is great already so which leads to what I want, you know, a lot of you always, I always talked about there's no need for a lot of golf equipment company. There's no need. Golf is the only sport that you have so many golf equipment company. And you can look at any other sport. Tennis. Baseball. Really any other sport. There's maybe only one to, th to three Equipment company. That's all you need. And the truth of the matter of fact, I challenge PGA Tour players. If you all hear this message, I challenge you after the coronavirus, when the world is clear of this virus, every one of you use the same club. Now you, you can have a different spec, maybe a stiffer shaft or lighter shaft. You can have this different spec. But I, I would say go out there, play with blades. Every one of you use blades. Every one of you uses uh, um, steel shaft. Every one of you use the same kind of head. And see if you guys, you guys can compete that way and who is the best golfer out there. I would challenge every one of your tour players, PGA tour players, European tour players, to do that. All right? So that's what I see what the coronavirus is doing for the golf industry. All right? So, I know, um, Jason, how long have I been talking? <laughs> uh, about 15 minutes. All right, good. So, I think in, 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 um, in short, it's, it's, you know, obviously the virus, it never need to happen, but the human race is evolving, right? Everything's changing all the time. You know, you can blame this, blame that. It just happens sometimes, but I know we can do better. We all can do better. And my job, we as a <clears throat> uh, golf instruction 
influenza, we want to do better, we want to serve you, we want to make sure you improve as an amateur to enjoy this game more. Okay? So, um, Jason, do we have any questions regarding um, golf? Or really, we can talk about if people have questions regarding what I just said, you know, they may debate with me, they say, hey, maybe they have a different idea regarding this uh, tough time, this trying time in the world, and we can talk about that too. Yeah, we can definitely talk about that, but um, first of all, Austin just said that, um, you know, Austin lives in Taiwan, and then he said that a lot of new amateurs who are starting learning golf recently, for sure, and he also said that driving range is overbooked every day in Taipei. Man, that's, that's a great news, because the truth is, because a lot of people, okay, so let's talk about this real quick. The truth is, you know, obviously, I'm in Nashville, and Jason's in Atlanta, you know, we're, we're in a different spot, but... As I'm quarantined, I'm not sick. As I'm isolating myself, there are people still calling me. And I have people that call me that I talked to them many years ago. Like an amateur or a lady. He said, you know, he said, hey, me and my girlfriend want to pick up golf again. I said, man, I'm so sorry. I can't, I'm not able to, I can't teach golf lessons right now, but check out my channel. You know, he said, man, I wish I would stay with golf now. Everybody's playing golf. Obviously. When he said everybody, not everybody, but most people started to pick up their old clubs and play golf. And then he said, I just went out there last week and I sucked. Well, I said, well, you haven't really, really played the game. I said, man, I wish I would have stuck with it. And I wish I would get more instruction from you. Now I would be able to play now, enjoy it. Because now I have so much time, I don't know what to do. So I said, well, check out our channel. See if you can learn on your own. We can connect when things, you know, hook it back up, when things die down a little bit, right? But you can see, because this coronavirus is getting a lot more people to learn how to play golf. Because, you know, they think about, wait a minute, what if, who knows, what if five years down the road there's something else happening, right? What if there's something, another, again, cross our fingers, I hope it never happened in our lifetime, but what if it do happen? Now, if it doesn't happen, five years from now or ten years from now, I'm, I'm able to play golf, right? So that's the reason why, which is great. I mean, I'm, I'm so glad Austin, even in Taiwan, that's happening. That's awesome. So Yeah, definitely. Um, so before we start answering questions, I just wanted to ask you, well, I have a question myself. So right now that a lot of people are staying home and um, some of them go to a driving range, but if the driving range is full, um, or they want to really isolate, um, aka quarantine themselves, um, they will have to stay home and practice. And you know, Lawrence, that we are starting to have a lot of online clients. You know, we do um, right. FaceTime one on one and one out. So I want you to talk about let everyone know what kind of things that they can practice when they are in their home. Like, um, and obviously, they can't hit balls, right? Not everyone has like a hitting that in the home or even if it's just something like in a living room like what you have right now if they just have a club they're watching your channel what areas of the body or or what particular problems should people work on good that's that's a very good um input so again the first thing i would tell you subscribe to our channel watch from the beginning because with energy first golf we talked about energy first impact impact later we're not going to teach you just to hit balls. We are here to teach you how to swing the golf club and play golf. So you can start watching from the beginning and learn from that. And second, you can actually do a lot of stretchings at home. And the truth is, all of the stretchings, you don't need to be golf specific. You can just go online, Google and say, hey, what is a just a normal routine of a stretch that I wanna do because I've got so much time at home. You can just Google it and they will show you and you can check out really our channel. I have some exercises. We're going to put more, but you can go online, Google it, and then it shows you a lot of stretch exercise, right? And I would definitely recommend you guys do that. And also, with Energy First Golf, we definitely talked about how it's so important for you to work on your recognition from your rib cage down. So it's absolutely essential for you to work on your inner thigh muscles, you know. And the truth is, remember, all of this 
golf exercise, you don't need, the beautiful thing about golf exercise is that you don't need heavy weights. You can stretch and you can use light weight, right, to do those exercises. Now again, um, we would love to continue adding more videos on the channel to promote a lot more exercise. But, you know, most recently we did one with, I'll give you six different exercises, three with the golf club and three you can just do it with, with a bench. And do those exercises, it's going to help you. I call the wake up, wake up the dragon. Wake up your oblique muscles, your core muscles, get those big turns correctly from your center, not from your shoulders to create those proper energy. So um, that's the reason why it's so important to um, work on your core. And the truth is when you're doing those exercises that work on your core, you don't need to do it fast. See, that's the beautiful thing. You don't need to do it very fast. You don't need to feel like you, you're going to the gym, like just pounding, pound the weights out. That's not how you work out with golf. Do it very slowly. And the truth is, I would recommend you guys, I don't know, you know, everybody has a different, <laughs> different taste in music. Put on some classical music. Put on some, I mean, I just discovered this guy named um, Stelvo, some Italian dude. I mean, great music, piano. I usually work out, me personally, I work out with slow music. I don't work out with drum beats that blow my ear off. So think about that. It's really a meditation. Okay? And the truth is why, think about why this is so important. Do things slowly. You listen to slower music. You listen to classical music. Because everybody, you all know you have a phone in your hand. Your job. Computer, everything is so demanding. Everything's like, like that. Quick, 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 right? Think about it. You have all of this. Computer, phones, iPads. What about when you have time and whoa, let me slow everything down. Let me work on golf exercises that Lawrence Energy First Golf and his first impact later talk about do everything slowly, play, put, play, put, put some slow music. Let's marinate. That's how you can train your body for golf. Again, this will give you a reflection. Oh, I have such fast paced lifestyle when I do golf. I slow down. I train my big muscles, my limb muscles, my quadricep, all those big muscles which I would refer to as slow twitch muscles, right? And your gluteus maximus, your core. So when you're working on those muscles, slow down, play slow music. Enjoy the moment, okay? Because the truth is, when you go out there and play golf, on the golf course, you're not supposed to hit a lot of balls. You're not supposed to do a lot of swing. So every swing counts. So when you're working at home, if you do everything very slow, it actually works. If I'm doing everything very slowly, right? If I'm doing everything very slowly, working on my balance, right? Working on my balance, it actually is good for golf. You don't need to be doing fast movement. So those are the recommendations. And the truth is, anytime you go to, like, you know, there's a lot of information on YouTube. You have so much um, information on YouTube regarding workouts. Any type of exercise you see, Put the tempo down, slow down everything when you do those exercises. Really, any type of physical exercise is going to be worth for golf. You just have to do it what? In a very slow tempo and rhythm. You don't need to do it fast. Okay? So, that's something I would recommend. Again, we're going to put more videos. Don't worry. So, alright, Jason. Yeah. So, we had someone in the group ask me, um, I mean, the WeChat group. Um, Jeff asked the, the practice about the back, so uh, the Chinese is Gong Pei. Mm -hmm. so, so he's asking what's the difference between that and like the regular regular fitness practice for your back. So well, basically, basically the difference between practice for like golf swing back practice and versus regular fitness back practice. Okay, we're going to talk about that. Um, that's a great question. And 
again, that's the reason why I'm, I'm able to answer those questions because I used to live in the gym. When I was 16, started 16, I used to live in the gym. So basically, let's just talk about um, the regular back exercise that you go to the gym, okay? Remember, when you go to the gym, a lot of the exercise is two-dimensional, really most. So for example, if I'm doing a, you know, I know a lot of you, they do it, like it's called a, you, you, you're on a bench, you do a um, back extension. You know, you do a back extension. So that right there is a two-dimensional movement, you're doing this. And you are working on your lower back muscles here. And at the same time, you're working on your glutes and your hamstrings and your calves. Okay? So that's one form of back, which is called a uh, lower back extension. And then you have, obviously, you have a pull-ups. You have pull-ups, or called a lat pull-down, right? Or the rowing, right? Of course, you can have dumbbell row, single dumbbell row, row barbell row, T-bar, right? Or you have machines, or you can do a, you know, just a thing that's called the TRX, the, the straps now, right? Uh, pull-ups. So those are the back exercises that works on your entire back, your lats, your scapulas right here, and your tra trapezius, right? So those are the back exercises. But now remember, the golf exercises, when we talk about um, in Chinese, we, talk, we say gong bei. I know a lot of English um, viewers. It is just what we've been talking about. It's called the flexing. It's called the flexing, it's called the flexing, or the, it's called the posterior. Now remember, this movement, when you do this back movement, you're engaging your gluteus maximus, and you're also engaging your little bit of your hamstrings here, and you're also engaging your core muscles. Basically, you're not moving forward like this. All you're doing is called a pelvis thrust. So you're just thrusting your pelvis. So you can see this exercise is very different than all the back exercise that I have mentioned earlier. Right? Because all the other back exercises are simply a way of moving all the muscles above here. But this one you're working on this range. So right here, you're working on muscles here. You tighten the muscles. I'm tightening the muscles, right? And I'm tightening my core. Because this movement is what happens when you downswing, when you weight transfer, and then your lower body would do this movement to maintain spine angle, and then you finish. So I'm gonna show you guys from the side view. Right? To finish. So that's the difference between the back exercise that you would do in the gym and the golf movement. Now remember, the exercise that in the gym, when you do your back, you can continuously do it. But I don't recommend you do it very uh, fast and also I don't recommend you do very heavy weight. Right? Now obviously if you say I'm going to do pull-ups, sure you can do pull-ups, but do it very slowly. Right? You don't need to do it very fast. And also, the idea, I don't, I don't know, a lot of you have watched our, ch um, our channel. We talked about how from the, from the rib cage up to here, I call this square block, or you can call it a rectangle. I call it the swing board. So absolutely, you can work on your swing board. Swing board just means this whole block right now is turning because of my body rotation here. But yeah, if you work out, if you work out with those back muscles or chest exercises, what it does, it firms up, remember, it firms up your swing board, which is a good thing. But now remember, when I say firm, it's different than tension or stress. Firm just something that's in a state where it's not rigid. It just, it's a movable, but it's not soft. So that's the reason why it's called firmness. And I, you know, again, check out, uh, I don't know, Jason, you know there's an episode I talked about swing board. If you 
Google our channel. I called it Swing Board. So check out that video where I talked about Swing Board, which is actually important if you do those back exercises in the gym and some chest workouts and shoulder workouts. Again, we have the meeting of our swing board called for golf, so I'll post that. Yeah. Again, you know, a lot of you guys watch my channel. I, I know a lot about working out. That's exactly what I mean by, again, you know, when you're younger, when you started playing golf, when you, before, your, before your puberty, your golf swing grows with you. All right? And then once you become an adult, the muscles all set in. You got to learn how to use those, use those muscles and train those muscles to work for you as an adult, but in a golf swing manner. So it's going to be very different when you do two-dimensional movement. So think about that. And the truth is, I, I, again, you can, you can debate with me all day long. I mean, I don't know any golf instructors out there that has a strong background on fitness and muscle training. I don't. I really don't. Okay? And also, I play a lot of different sports when I'm growing up. All right? So we got all the questions. Yeah, so next question is from um, Simon. And um, Simon asked, um, he, he seen a lot of Korean people at Grand Bay Grand, and he feel like they have a different um, golf swing. So he's asking whether Korean people have a different golf swing, and Austin also commented that um, he knows there's a Korean coach whose name is J.D. Kim. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know that guy, and um, he said he's a pretty good teacher in golf. Um... I think, well, first of all, remember, the important thing is to understand there's no such thing as perfect golf swing, okay? There's only perfect energy. And the truth is, if you look at, look at all the Korean professional players, they all actually swing differently, right? Now, one thing I do know what, think about one thing is very important, okay? Remember, when golf first started in Korea, it was purely for what? Either older people or kids. Golf did not get really popular until Surrey Park. And once that happens, a lot of parents are promoting younger kids. I do know for a fact, most Golf coaches, think about this. Remember earlier I said that there's older Korean players, but they're no one knows. They might be teachers. Okay, they, but there's younger people who want to learn golf. Now think about one thing. Remember I say that when you were young, learning golf is very different. So what the Korean coach do? Now obviously all those Korean coaches, they have a lot of knowledge with what they know about golf swing. But one thing I can tell you for certain is that they put... One word, one word is very important. It's called discipline. They implement strong discipline. They say that today you have to do 500 swing without a ball. Today you have to do 500 this, do this movement, do that movement. Also understanding most, what, what's his name when he asked the question? Jason? Um, Simon. Simon, Simon, understand. You can have one, say 100 kids in Korea started playing golf. You know how many of them become pro? Maybe not one. Okay. But the idea is that, understanding, I don't believe they teach anything different. Okay. And the truth is, again, if you look at LPGA tour player, they all have a different swing. Amy Park swings different than Nyan Choi. Swings different than... Um, this, this girl with short hair. So they all have different swing. So you cannot say they all have, you know, again, I'm, I'm not saying they don't have a good coach. But good coach, it's debatable. But what Koreans, they implement something from older generation who nobody knows, maybe playing golf, to younger generation, they implement strict discipline. So out of the 100 kids or 1,000 1, kids, they pound them, they pound them, they pound them. So, 
They're going to have come out some, somebody again. Remember, when I say when you're young, you run golf, it's very easy for you to harness the energy that we're talking about. So that's how Korean get a lot of... But also remember, even in Korea, there are a lot more famous lady golfers than men, right? So think about why that's why you, you know I want I want you, I want Simon to think about why I say that. Uh, and next time I want him to ask, we can talk about this question. And we're gonna keep that in mind on the next live stream. So it's not necessarily um, again. I always talk about the way you look at golf instruction. You can talk about external instruction. You can talk about internal instruction. Again, I don't know anybody who talk about in, internal instruction, but energy first golf. We do. But what the Korean does, they have a mind, a discipline of the mind for younger generation. And they, if when you are young and you keep working on external mechanics, you will create internal energy. But that doesn't mean everybody, right? So, you see, the reason why I know that because it doesn't mean when someone started young, they're going to be a very good golfer. That's not the case, okay? So all the tour players you see, they either have a strong discipline, they get it, they say, oh, one day they wake up and say, oh, I see what that feels like. But they were very young. They started playing golf, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. But out of that age group, it doesn't mean everybody's going to come out. So that's something you can debate it. But again, I can only judge an uh, instructor when I see how he teaches. First thing I do is that, is he teaching internal mechanics? That's one. Two, is he teaching external mechanics? And what is the age of student that he's teaching? So, think about what I just said. But remember, again, a tour player and amateur is very different. And the truth is, most, I mean, I actually have a lot of Korean students that come to me from their Korean teachers. I don't, I don't teach them any different or if, if you talk about external mechanics. But there are, there are things they say, man, how come my teacher never talk about this? Well, I say, well, they, they either tell you to pound the ball or they work on external mechanics. Again, I know for a fact. So, all right. Yeah, all right. So next question comes from Peter. Um, Peter asks, to piggyback off what you were saying, how can we increase range of motion on our shoulder and internal rotation of hips? Well, um, so that's a very good question. But remember, when you try to, if you try to increase your, the truth is, I, I did an English video I talked about, really the, um, really the most recent video I talked about, if you want to increase golf range of motion, what makes golf difficult is that if your fast twitch muscles move faster than your slow twitch muscles, it's not going to work. So in this video, I actually, um, in the most, most recent English video, I talked about if, you're, if you are trying to improve your range of motion when you're working on golf movement, do it very slowly. See, what I'm doing right now, if I'm turning my body right now, I'm thinking to myself, I'm purely going to focus on my muscles here. So you know, I haven't really, I have not touched the golf club today. So if I'm doing this right now, this is going to be purely so f dry and fresh for me. So I'm going to be turning to here, and probably couldn't turn it anymore. So I'm going to tell myself, should I use my shoulders to stretch my core? The answer is no. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it very slowly. I'm going to go to here and try to stretch my core without using my shoulders and then I'm going to do it one more time and then I'm building the range of motion not because my shoulders can pull it you see that's exactly what makes golf so difficult but at the same time you have to change the mind how you think oh wait a minute I'm pulling here should I pull more should I pull more okay I'm going to pull more from my shoulders then that's not going to help you because why? Then you're building recognition on your shoulder muscles. You see? That's what makes golf challenge. 
So to answer your question, uh, it's Peter, right? Yes. Yeah, just when you stretch, main thing, you know, with the golf stretch, I, I usually stretch a lot of my legs, right? Stretch a lot of my legs when you stretch your legs, and but when you stretch your core, just do it very slowly. Because every human being is so easy for you to do that. It's so easy. <laughs> I mean, you don't even have to... See, the funny thing, it's so easy, you, you don't even have to think about it. You just go, oh. See, that's exactly what I mean by internal golf. Internal golf not necessarily means internally the muscles, but also here. Here, which I talked about earlier, discipline. So you got to tell yourself, how do I discipline my body, of my mind to go, okay, do I do it very slowly, or do I go like this? Right? Which leads to, think about it. Think about why do you think the United States, golf's been around the United States and England and Europe so long. Amateurs are not good at golf. Amateurs are not good at golf. The USGA average score is still 90 to 95. That's assuming people count the strokes correctly. Because why? Because think about why. Because every year they come out, they, they have this PGA show, they come out with new gadgets, training aids. And all those training aids to do what? Think about all those training aids to help you do what? To help you move faster. To help you move faster, but which you don't need to when you learn how to play golf. Like, you know, you see those rubber bands, right? These rubber bands do this. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm making a very good stretch. <laughs> no, it's not going to help you. It is not going to help you. The truth is, remember, this is year 2020. Just say 10 years ago or 20 years ago, they already have a lot of what? Training aids, the rubber bands, the, the, the hangers, the, the, the co hangers. And I see people have a co hanger, they do this. I like, I'm, I'm like, well, dude, what are you doing, man? I said, I got this coat hanging. I'm working on my top of swing. I said, man, you, all you're doing is use your arms. You haven't lowered your body. But you say, they say, man, this, this, this gadget works. Because I've seen it on TV. All the tour players sometimes use that. I say, yeah, they use it, but they turn their body. You use it, you just move your arms. So, <laughs> do you guys understand my point now? Again, I cannot blame you guys. All the amateurs out there, you, you were as confused as I am when I first played golf. I have notes, golf notes this thick, which I throw them all away when I was 30, because it's all BS. Just think about that. So again, I cannot blame you guys because you guys got so much information. You say, man, I'm getting this rubber band. I'm getting good, good, good turning, good turning. All you do is training your fast twitch muscle. And if you're doing this, how are you going to weight transfer? This is coming down. Right? I mean, just think about it. There's no way you can control your body like that. So just work again. <laughs> Again, a lot of people say, you know, I say, you know, energy first golf is the standard golf instruction. You can see why, right? You can see why I say that. Because I had a lot of instructions before. It didn't work for me. Until I realized, oh, I need to create internal recognition. The mind has to control what my body is doing in the right way. So, yeah, that's the only way. If you, again, keep watching energy first golf. That's the only advice I can give you. And you can always ask me questions, but if you work on external, you always remember, if you work on external movement, you can work on external movement, but if you don't understand internal movement, you can always want to create contradictions. Which, if you have create contra if you create contradiction, you're not going to improve. But remember, in life, it's okay to be right and it's okay to be wrong. If you know you're wrong, you're corrected. But you, again, that's the reason why I don't blame amateurs, because every one of you are very confused. If you're confused, if you have a lot of contradiction, contradiction in Chinese means Mao Zedong, you know, it's not going to help you improve. I know a lot of, um, a lot of English viewers right now, if, 
Mauda means you have a spear and a, and, a, and a shield. The guy who's selling the spear go, this is the best spear. It's going to puncture every, every shield in the world. You can buy this. And then he go, well, this is my shield. This is the best shield in the world. It will block every spear in the world. Then the buyer is like, what about your, your spear and your shield? Who's, who, which one is stronger? He, he don't know what to say. That's contradiction. Okay? All right. So, <laughs> Jason? All right. So, um, we got Brian Thomas in the chat and Brian both. I think you know both of them. And uh, Brian Thomas said we love Coach Flores. Well, appreciate it, Brian. Brian, how you doing? Thank you. Brian, and yes. And also, um, Brian both says, amen, he so gets it. And um, you have, I don't, I, I, if I pronounce the name wrong, forgive me. What's up, Brian, Brian Bobby? <laughs> yes. I know, I know so both Brian, know, yes. Hemus? Hemus, Hemus, yeah, Hemus, he's in uh, Texas right now. How you doing, Hemus? Yeah, Hemus says, um, he said, I credit my high school district tournament win to this man. Thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> Alright, so next question comes from Austin. So he asked the most of the Korean or KPGA players are two points with. Is there any reason? Um I actually I don't think so. I mean like I say, if you look at my if you look at my video, two plane, one plane is purely based on your setup. So there's Again, you know, if you have someone like Bubba Watson, it's noticeably too plain. But there's no. Again, we talked about if you notice like the extreme, you know, you got someone like um, Ricky Fella, it's purely one plane. Then you got someone like Bubba Watson. But anyway, in between that, I don't like to talk about. Two plane, one plane is because when someone new come to me, based on their correct setup, based on your correct setup, when you turn, if you turn correctly, your lead on, your lead on will be in the right position if you don't have any type of external manipulation. Okay, if I'm turning right now. So in other words, me as a player, if I set up like this, this would be an extreme example of a two plane. So if I just set up lower, if I turn my body, and you can see my arms is different. So I can go from this position set up to, to an extreme this position. You can see the arms are very different. So again, this, this, the reason why he asked questions is because he's trying to figure out what works best for you. But see, remember, I say that to you. It's not about where your arm is. It is really about how you first, your personal setup, what is your angle? You know, is your posture correct? Is your weight balance correct? Is your back flat? Okay? Now, with this posture right now, I can go higher, I can go lower. And they're all correct. Right? And then, if I'm turning... If I'm turning, what is my recognition of a rotational structure? But also think about this though. Remember, this is what's crazy about golf. When you play golf, you're never in a flat ground. You're never in a flat ground. So believe me or not, what's his name again? Is it Austin? Yeah, Austin. Austin, there are times maybe you're doing two playing because the slope. There are times maybe you're doing one plane because if the the slow. Because why think about it? If right now my ball is below me, if I'm standing like this, this arm based on rotation, this arm is gonna be pretty low. It's not gonna be here. So if I'm on a heel, right now if I turn, I'm not gonna be here. I'm gonna be here. So you understand what I'm trying to tell you is that you can always break down certain angles or certain extreme ideas like, you know, Bubba Watson, Ricky. But remember, even when they're swinging, they're playing a healy course. The exact angle of the arms and the body may not be what you see. 
So, <laughs> there's no right or wrong. It's just, again, because they are so young, they recognize what? What they recognize? They recognize a center rotational, center rotational movement. The arms are simply following the body rotation. So in other words, if I go to a heli course, and if I'm standing like this, if I rotate, if I rotate like that, I'm going to fall over. So I'm going to do what? I'm going to set up like that, the ball's up here, I'm going to rotate like this. And then I swing. <laughs> so, just think about what I say, because every course, and except your, of course your tee shot, you know, you're going to have a flat lie in a perfect position, but after that, you're not going to. So it's not about two plane, one plane. Two plane, one plane, it's just explained to you, okay, this is a swing mechanics. But you as a player, you got to understand, how do you get to that position based on correct center rotation? It's really that simple. You cannot put this arm, right? You still got to lower your body. So, depending on the angle where your ball is, I mean, how, you got to know how you turn your body. <laughs> right? You can't go, well, my, I'm over here, my arms has to be here because I'm doing, because I'm doing two plane. Well, then you will, you know, I don't want to use bad word. <laughs> you know, it, it, then you're in, you're, in, you're in trouble. You're not going to be able to get the ball out. So, just again, I understand there's a lot of people, you, you, you will get confused between what I call the external mechanics and there's the internal mechanics. Okay? Internal mechanics is more important than external mechanics, which is exactly what we mean by energy first. If you know your energy, when I say energy, it also means correct rotation. Correct rotation is going to create and produce correct energy. If you don't have a correct rotation and loading, you're not going to have correct energy. So forget about two plane, one plane. You, you're still not going to do it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you say, I have, two, I have a perfect two plane or I have a perfect one plane. You're still not going to, it's not going to help you. That's the reason why I always tell people, it doesn't matter what you swing. You swing, you swing one plane swing like, you know, they, they, Bryson DeChambeau. Or you swing like Ricky Fowler, or you swing like Matt Kuchar, or you swing like Bubba Watson, or you swing Stack and Till, or you swing, you swing Justin Rose, um, rotate and stack. So it, it doesn't matter. You still, you still got to understand what, that, what the rotation means to you. What it means to you create energy first. With your body, remember your body and my body is different. You may have a longer torso, shorter torso. Everybody's different. Some lady have an extreme sway back, and they might have to tuck it in a little bit and still look sway, which a lot of people challenge me and say, hey, how come you say flat back? And if you look at this LPJ tour player, he still looks like, I say, well, because if in normal, normal circumstances, he looks like this. So if he looks like this, it's okay. Maybe he's already in a flat back. So everybody's different. But you have to base on energy first. Where's your energy? How do you create energy? What is the proper way for you to load and coil? By stretch your shoulder like this, you're still not loading. You're still not coiling. So that's that's the reason why golf is so hard for amateurs. And you got all these instructions out there. And the truth is, again, like I say, you know, Butch Harmon can stay in front of me right now. Tiger, I can tell them they don't know enough to explain to amateurs because they, not, they have never gone through what I call hardship. They all started playing golf in Wednesday 3. Butch Herman started playing golf. He's, his family's a golf, golfers. So, you know, think about that. All right. Uh, uh, so, yeah, so I mean, I know this is the first time we do the English. Um, There's a lot of questions. So, so the, not not many um, questions slash people in chat, but that's fine. Um, we're already at um, 50, 55 minutes, uh, believe it or not. So, Lawrence, if you want to um, today, just stick to an hour and spend the next five minutes for a wrap up. Uh, maybe um, talk more about you know practice golfing or home since our topic is about 
how the coronavirus will change the golf industry. Okay, um, so um, so the closing statement I will make is that um, the truth is um, I, I'm just gonna tell you what I've been, what I have been doing in the uh, the past few weeks. Um, the, it's funny because I'm sitting at home. Actually, I'm I'm gaining weight. You see, so you know I got a little bit of um, weight up here, right? So what I do is I would do you know I've been doing stretches like this, right? Stretches like this, you know, and just stretches for the core. And I am doing a lot of sitting rotational movement without a lot of shoulder involvement. And I have been doing push-ups. Push-ups that's on my knee, you know, push-up that's on my knee, right? And I do it very slowly. At the same time, what I do is, when I'm doing those exercises, and I'll forget to mention to you guys earlier, I work on breathing. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. So, those are very important. Now remember, why is breathing so important? It's because when you go play golf, you get nervous. You get nervous. So, again, every human being know how to breathe, but when you get nervous, you, sometimes you stop breathing. So when you do exercise, guess what? Work on your breathing too. Have a pattern of breathing, right? So in other words, if you're standing in the tee box, first tee, your buddy's making fun of you, and you got this long hold, tight fairway, you say, let me work on some breathing first. You know, a couple times, so you can, I can relax my shoulders. And then turn very slowly. And trust that, because remember, on the first tee, when you're nervous, you don't need, you don't need to hit 300 yard drive. On the first tee, doesn't matter what hole, you get out there and play. It could mean 200 yard drive. It doesn't matter, because that's how you overcome your mental fear of a playing golf is by having a result that you can trust and then it's a safe ball by understanding breathing. Now a lot of people say, well it's only 200 yards, I mean the, the hole is so long, I say, well look, then you got to keep your mind positive. Take that 200 yard drive and move on to the next shot. Forget about 200 yards because that 200 yards isn't safe. You move on to the next shot. Think about that. And maybe you can make it bogey out of first hole instead of double, triple. Don't think about the unnecessary stuff. Stuff. Think about what is in the moment, what you have been training for, what is your rhythm. And also, I'm, what I'm doing is really rhythm, just rhythm. Because I'm, I'm not going to do 30, 100 push-ups. I'm working on stuff. Working on rhythm, working on breathing, working on slow movement, working on stretch. All right? So, um, take this time, you know, I know the coronavirus, um, to really take this time, you know, watch our channel. Um, we're going to be doing this live streams a lot. And I uh, hope you enjoy this. And again, everyone, wash your hands. Stay out of harm's way. Right? And uh, we shall overcome this. And we will. You know, the human being the, as a race is very strong. We got to work together. Forget all this BS stuff. I know. I would never get, you know, I only know golf. But that's it. Golf, fitness, we would never get political. Because the truth is, if the world is all golfers and farmers, we'd be all right. Okay? All right. So, um, Jason, you have a, a final word? Uh, no, just uh, hope everyone stay safe and uh, we'll continue to make um, great golf videos and um, doing live streams um, sooner or later. Yes, absolutely. All right. So, um, thank you for watching. Thank you for spending time with me. Um, I really appreciate it. This is fun. This is, again, this is the very first time doing it. Um, pass the word out. You know, I think we may be the only golf 
channel that we will be doing golf instructions is live and answer all of your questions. Again, I would, I would so appreciate if someone asked me questions that I have to think for a long time or I'm not able to answer. That would be great. I mean, that's something I look forward to. I like challenges. Again, I would never say I know everything. I'm a student to the game. I'm always welcoming new ideas, learning things. So please challenge us. Please challenge Energy First Impact Later. Please challenge the channel. And I think by doing so, we're all going to come out better on the other end. So um, thank you for watching. I will see you next time. All right. Bye-bye, you're on. Thank you. Um, what do I do here? Just close it?